Welcome to Eco Ask Why, a podcast that dives into industrial manufacturing topics and spotlights the heroes that keep America running. I'm your host, Chris Granger, and on this podcast, we do not cover the latest features and benefits on products that come to market. Instead, we focus on advice and insight from the top minds of industry because people and ideas will be how America remains number one in manufacturing in the world. Welcome to Eco Ask Why. I'm your host, Chris Granger, and I'm looking forward to spending some time with you today. You know, we have a new format here on Eco Ask Why. We're bringing you information each month where we really try to go deep, to give you wisdom and insight that you can take and apply to your industrial manufacturing facility today. Now, we started off this, this new format working around the idea of installed, installed asset analysis, right? Understanding the equipment that you have inside your plant. Then we move to the whole system design concept. How, how do you design systems to make sure that it's meeting the need that you're going to have at the end, right? And that you, you have all the KPIs, you have all the metrics you're measuring, you, you, you put all the things in place to make sure that system is going to meet your need. And then we start going a little bit deeper. We start talking about smart motor protection and what smart motor protection looks like. Why does it matter how you can start applying it to your, your applications, to your business to make better decisions? And then our last one was around the I- IoT solutions. So we have so many new technologies out there these days. And the IoT is, has really just made its, 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 its way all the way to the plant floor where all these connected devices, interoperability. And we talked very in depth on how you connect your machines. So for this episode, we're going to be talking about a strategic imperative that for, is near and dear to me because this is something that I was, I was heavily involved with at, at one point in my career at Eco, and that's around power monitoring, you know, power monitoring solutions. So if you're in industrial manufacturing, the strategic deployment of power monitoring has really progressed to where now it is a necessity. You have to have this if you want to have operational excellence. And at Eco, we have a lot of power experts. Some of great power, you've heard some of our power experts on, on Eco SY in the past, and we'll try to link some of those up in the show notes for you. But we talk, we're going to talk today, particularly around, you know, what's, why is, is power monitoring important? You know, things you need to consider as you start moving forward. But we really have two primary solutions at Eco that we try to point people to when this is an area that they feel like they want to get started with. And that's Eaton's Power Expert Meter and Rockwell Automation's Power Monitor. Okay. So Eco today, again, we have lots of depth and, and broad knowledge and understanding of, of power monitoring. So if you're listening to this, to this point and you want to get started, connect with us. We have the experts. We can talk with you. We can, we can help you understand your particular application and try to get you some really good insight that's going to help you move forward and act, and put this into play. Okay. So now well, let's, we're going to start off when we start thinking through this power monitoring and how, how things have really evolved. We're going to, just look at the genesis because we need to understand the crucial role of power monitoring and it all starts at the beginning. So maybe you remember the days of chart recorders. And if you do remember those days, you may be smiling right now because those solutions, they, they worked, right? They were crude, but they weren't. They, they, they were usually tracking one variable. That, that was the main thing. And you, but you could go back and you could look at the logs of data and understand what that one variable was showing you and how it changed over time. So, it was it was a it was a system that at its time when implemented correctly, it gave you let's just say decent results. Now, modern power monitoring takes on those multiple variables. You have tons of imp- of insight, right? And you have a comp- it gives you a comprehensive picture of the health of your overall process. And as mach- machinery, they started became becoming more and more complex. Just think how about how machines are designed. The ability to to monitor that power consumption that became paramount so again that 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 rudimentary practice of tracking just one very very uh, point of data was really a great way to get started and that laid the groundwork for what would be kind of an involved evolved rather a sophisticated discipline so now as it has been moving as this has been moving forward the history of power power monitoring has seen a pretty big shift in the focus and how the methodology works. So in its infant stages, again, most of this stuff was primarily reactive. And you would address things as they occurred. 
If something happens, you go out there and you check your power. You're, you're trying to see what's going on there. Maybe put a little logs on. But you've had, as the technology has advanced, everything starts shifting. And we're going to talk about this more and more as we go to a more pr- proactive monitoring process. And current, instead of over voltage, that started became, becoming more and more of a, of a recognizing as being a leaning indicator because it gives you valuable insights into issues before they can begin to escalate to, you know, where something burns up, or catastrophic, right? So this began once we had recognizing these things started to change the game on what power monitoring meant and how it can make a significant impact in manufacturing. So let's, let's, let's kind of dig a little bit deeper. Let's talk about some developments in this journey that, that helped us get to where power monitoring is important. First of all, you went from reactive to proactive because reactive monitoring involved responding, just like I said earlier, to something that went after it broke. If a failure has happened, something's going down in the plant, and if you're in an industrial manufacturing right now, and you know you can spend countless hours of money responding to events that are disruptive. And it just takes it takes your whole operations down. And I went into did some research around the Marshall Institute, and they actually put out you'll pay two to five times more. Versus if you would have just done some proactive maintenance. That's very insightful data. And as someone who used to come from the motor service industry, this is the world we lived in. Unplanned downtime. You want to think those things that get supervisors and managers and directors and executives worked up. Unplanned downtime is it. So if you want to add value to for your, your facility, you have to start get past the reactive maintenance thinking. And yet, and this is where power monitoring really started to, to grow legs because the potential impact was there. And we could see that that transition was huge, but it didn't happen overnight, right? Manufacturers had to start addressing how to help the end users, users utilize that data to make better decisions because they weren't just going to go spend money just to spend money. They needed to have a reason. They needed to show how, what is their return? How can I show these? And this led to like a proactive approach. That we could show them, hey, we're going to help you utilize real time data to anticipate and address those problems before they come critical. And once you start doing that, you're speaking the language of the industrial manufacturing. Maybe you're, you're smiling, you're nodding your head right now because you know where I'm talking about. This is where manufacturers had to go. Now, again, I talked earlier about current. Current is a huge leading indicator of issues. And manufacturers begin, hey, I think I can design solutions to address this head on and give them the end users data up front that's going to help them make better decisions. And this was a huge, huge turning point. Early warning signs were, by looking at fluctuations in current could really give you insight to the impending issues. Now, that initial monitoring focused primarily on any energy consumption. And it was, it didn't really think that predictive cap, uh, capability, but the technology available at the time, <laughs> right? The, the current monitoring was not present to the way it could, it could be used today. And as current monitoring, as we're going to see as we get further and further and further in this conversation, we're going to, we're going to kind of give you some insight to how that has evolved. And this was a big waking moment for me, particularly in the motor repair business. When we started getting into more of the predictive re- reliability side of the business and understanding you know what? You can look at that current. You can do current signature analysis. And you can find a lot of good insight right there on the health of the motor circuit, what's going on with that those assets. And you can do a better job of saying, okay, here's where this motor is now. And here's where the performance was a year ago. And you can see the degradation over time. So we need to take action. So that type of stuff was only, was only available when you start looking at the current. So then you had to start integrating predictive maintenance. And how do you start integrating that? And so local maintenance teams were impacted by this. Just think about this. You have new technology is hitting a lo- the local team. The maintenance individuals are the ones who bear the brunt. And maintenance traditionally was scheduled at, at regular intervals. Okay. Regardless of whatever the equipment conditions was, a lot of this stuff just said at scheduled intervals, we're going to do this all based off equipment run hours and uh, how, how often a plant's been running or production output of, of, of the, the end product, whatever it may be. But this technology, when it started to evolve, allow teams not only to be proactive, but be predictive. And they would start predicting when issues would arise. 
and this that really started cutting down. Now you're talking about you're going from proactive to predictive. You're really cutting down on on-plan downtime significantly. And that became possible because you're leveraging real-time data. So you see how that evolution works? You're, you're leveraging that data. You're optimizing your equipment upkeep, right? You're doing the work that needs to be done when it needs to be done. And through that, that downtime is, is steadily just on the decline. And technology began to catch up with the demands. And next thing you know, everything starts turning. Everything. So this is very important. I'm just, I'm pretty excited about this topic because this is an opportunity for everyone out there. If you're hearing this podcast, you have an opportunity to implement power monitoring into your, to your system today. It's not just for certain manufacturers. No, it's for everyone. And this is why power, power monitoring matters because it is the cornerstone of operational excellence. You want to start saving some, some money, some funds, be more cost effective. This is a technology to look at. You want to lower your risk and take that risk mitigation down. This is where it's at. And I know we're talking about saving money, lowering our risk and operating better. Come on. This is a touchdown across the board. That continuous tracking and analysis of power, particularly the parameters that matter, that gives you, it actually empowers you <laughs> to optimize your energy usage. You can identify your inefficiencies out there, and then you can start tackling those issues head on, one at a time. And this is you tackle those when you want, on your terms, and it's not the unplanned downtime dictating your day. This this results in significant cost savings, as we talked about, because you have better energy management, but it also extends the lifespan of those assets. Think about it. You're able to spend more time working on them when it matters and you're reacting to and you're understanding what is the data is telling you. Your overall reliability is going through the roof. So this is such an indispensable tool, such an indispensable tool. And this enables you to elevate your operational performance. And again, get those risks out of there. We know you want to get the risk out of your plant and this is where it's all about. And that success we know so important because the landscape for industrial manufacturing is so competitive. Think about the competitors that you, for whatever your product is, they are constantly every day thinking, how can they lower their costs and have a competitive market advantage? You start, you can implement simple technologies like power monitoring to at least be on the, the, the cutting edge to maintaining and keeping your system fully optimized. And then you start moving in that predictive maintenance then you start moving in, into to really where you're understanding what that data is telling you and the harnessing that data if you, it, the data actually tells you that you can get about 30 percent of equipment failures you can predict them through current monitoring and start looking at your power so maybe that's the one stat that you want to think about today okay how if i can if i can get 30 percent of my equipment failures look at your the last year how many equipment failures did you have? What was the cost of that? If you could take that number and impact it, and maybe you cut it cut it down, say 20%, just give yourself a little grace there. What would that do to the bottom line? What would that do to your stress, right? This is a frontline defense right here. This power monitoring is such a leading indicator, and it's going to give you some insights that you'll be able to act on because it's going to show you hope. This is what's changing over here. And because of that, I need to start addressing this right now. You'll be looking at spikes. You'll be looking at drops. And all those are early warning signs to allow your staff, your trained people, maybe you're part of that team, to start to put a plan in place and to make those corrections when you need to at the least impactful time. Right. And you can avoid those costly breakdowns and those nasty surprises. No one wants to get that call at two o'clock in the morning that the, the equipment's down particularly if it's something that could have been prevented. Now, if you're thinking about how you can, you can actually get more efficiency out of your operations, this is where it's at. You know, you can see right here firsthand that it's, it's, that you can have hard data to, to give you, to help you make better decisions rather. Okay. The hard data, because the power data enables you to point, pinpoint the energy intensive devices. And then you can start making better decisions because the goal is not just to save today, but just really start changing the culture 
and start changing the ways people are thinking inside your plant around efficiency. So if you're focused on continual refinement and data-driven analysis, that's going to pay you dividends way into the future. So you're going to, talking about predictive maintenance and getting the operational efficiency. Then you even have that risk mitigation. And this is, this is so, so powerful. I think that's the right word. Because think about this for a second. If you're looking at those ana- anomalies and they're telling you, hey, something's going on over here. It's giving you that early warning so- sign. And that could cause issues. Of overheating. Think about this for a second. When you have most electrical issues, electrical failures, particularly in the in the motor circuit, most of the motors, and we saw came a lot of motors and electrical equipment over the years, most of the motors that came in fail because of heat. Well, what causes heat? Well, current and the friction. And that is a big indicator right there. So if you can lower your risk while while things are still somewhat of an infant. Right, you can see those minor fluctuations before they become extremely disruptive. It's a safer environment. I've seen motors where you cannot touch them. They're, I mean, they're just literally getting ready to burn up and catch on fire. You know what? Current monitoring, many cases, could identify this and reduce the likelihood of a fire and safeguard your people. So, again, this comes down to full circle risk mitigation. The whole point of technology as you move forward is to make your facility safer. Again, this is for everyone, everyone, because you may think, you know what? That's just a reserve. That's just technology that can only be used for the, the, the exclusive manufacturing sites, right? Basically, I have to have a certain level of technology before I do this. Wrong, wrong, because this is scalable and it fits everyone because the journey really starts when you, make, when you decide to put in one meter, one meter into an existing infrastructure. And then that's going to unlock data that you never realized was there before. And this is a great way, great way to lay that foundation and get started. And then you can start moving into future expansions from there, but you need to start thinking about how can I start right here, right now? So any industrial site that's out there, I don't care how complex it is or how simple, you can embark on a power monitoring journey. By just by starting with this, and I want to give you a couple of insights here on how to do this with, with the e, again, the Eaton Power Expert and the Rockwell Automation Power Monitor. So if you're interested in either one of those technologies, go check out the show notes. We have lots of links. We have a blog written out there on this topic. I want to give you lots of ways that you can get the data to make better decisions, okay? Because both of them, they stand at the forefront of technology. They really are. And the, the innovation they have is unbelievable. And they transcend they transcend the boundaries that are out there, I'm telling you. And it's not just the data that they're giving you, but actual insights. So you can take that data. You can make more informed decisions real time. So if you need help with that, again, we have a team at ECO that's just, that is trained in this. We'll have links in the show notes as well. If you want to schedule time to talk with some of our power experts directly about your situation, how you can put this one meter onto this one application and what it can really do for you, we have it. We have the team ready that's here for you because it all, a lot of this comes down to your IT and your OT. Power monitoring actually is in both worlds because you have your information technology, you have your operation technology, and that has really, you're bridging the gap because it's not a silo anymore because this is a collaborative tool because both groups have to think about this and they have to operate together. Think about power impacts everyone. So when you start thinking about your facility, and a comprehensive approach to power monitoring, well, that data can be used by across the board. Oh, this is it. And if you need translators to help their IT and OT, sometimes there's a gap. The team at ECO is here for you. And then you, once you have that IT and OT working together, you start seeing that, oh, there's new possibilities in using that data for industrial, for our operations team. You can start, hey, I can be, be more predictive. We can be more collaborative. We can bring this stuff together. It starts opening up conversations that you'd be glad you did because the age of smart manufacturing is right here. And the the core of smart manufacturing is how you leverage data to be better, to be more efficient, to reduce downtime, to make better decisions. And ultimately, it's all about impacting the bottom line. That's what it's all about. So let's figure this out together. How can you take some practical steps to move forward? Again, think big. Start small. We had a podcast one time and her guest, her name was Tessa. She said that she said, think big, start small. And I was, that just stuck with me 
because it doesn't have to start with this large commitment where you're just leaping into the unknown. You just want to spend these, these thousands of this big capital project. No, start small. Again, one critical piece of equipment, maybe one lineup, one existing infrastructure, one meter, and then get some wins. Look for that experience team that can help you out there. Pull the data as a proof of concept to get you some traction because you're going to need that. You're going to need that. And then as you get traction and you feel confident in yourself, start expanding. Start expanding that system out. And then the things you'll be, you'll be surprised at how seamless and how adoptive this technology is and how you'll have advocates, advocates on your side that are going to come alongside. Next thing you know, when you want to actually move your next lineup or your next uh, upgrade project, whatever it may be, if you have advocates who see the power of what you're doing through this monitoring solution, and what it's providing them, whoo, you're in a great position of influence and to get things done. And that's what it's going to take to be a champion in this industrial manufacturing world. So, Grant, again, get started with a proof of concept. So, as you start thinking about your proof of concept, make sure you not just throw something in without thinking about it. You really need to take your time. You need to think about what are the benefits? What am I really trying to, to pull out of this system to make better decisions? Think about scalability. If this works, how am I going to scale it up? And then think about the adaptability to the facility size, right? What's the best technology that I need for, for, for this, the install base that I have? And I'm telling you the best place to learn and, is, and explore those proof of concept ideas is in one of our labs. So we'll have links in the show notes. But if you're in, in the Virginia area, we have several labs in Virginia and in Carolinas and Raleigh and Columbia. We have several labs again. This is where these labs are all about. To come in, to, to throw stuff against the wall, to see the technology for itself, for yourself and how it can apply directly to your application. Maybe you just want to sit down and see the software. Okay, here's what here's from the hardware standpoint. Here's what it's telling me. But how do I actually get that data pulled into my processor to make better decisions? We'll show you that. We'll give you insight. We'll help you bridge those gaps. Now, the initial focus when you start commencing a, a power monitoring solution, you, you really need to start thinking about the equipment itself because that equipment that you're going to be using to pull in the data is a cornerstone, of the, and that's what's going to give you a proof of concept. So you need to make sure that you're pulling the right solutions that going to give you the tangible benefits up front. So you need to understand that. Again, scalability is big, right? It has to think about, it has to think past just immediate gains. You have to th really emphasize scalability as a, as a pivotal factor because you're, as you go up the organizational chart and you start thinking about people who approve these projects, they want to understand, okay, what does the roadmap look like? How are we going to get this implemented across all of our solutions? Scalabilities matter. Then adaptability, right? It's, it's not just about, the size across an organization, right? You need to think about for how can this technology scale and adapt and actually work inside the plant that you have directly. And then you need to have some alignment. And that successful collaboration is really a starts when you have alignment within your team. When people are talking the same talk, they're sharing the same language. All that matters, especially when we start talking about power terminology, because there can be a gap there. But when you start using power monitoring solutions to pull that technology in, all of a sudden you can change that language to really re be reflective of what they, how they, how they speak to things, specific equipment, things like that. So now, get it, get the key stakeholders involved. Think, think across the board holistically. Your technicians, you need to make sure you have the, the, their understanding of what is important to them. Management team, what do they need to see to make better decisions? And then the engineering and your IT, that is so crucial. Don't just, don't piecemeal this stuff together. You have to think about, okay, how can I go across and make collaboration a part of it? Because if you do this without focusing on how to collaborate, you're going to miss someone, and that may be the one area that you needed to focus on to give you that that little bit of boost to get the project going. Because it's all about getting those friction points out of the place, right? Out of, out of the way. We've already talked about the friction between IT and OT. You've got to address that head on. That must be done. Early alignment. That means you bring them in from the out from the, from the outset before you even get get, get in, installing anything, because you need to take a proactive approach to address their challenges head on too. 
Because if you want this thing to be just a nice, everyone singing Kumbaya and sitting around a campfire, you better do the homework up front. Do it up front and then get that expert guidance. Because if you're trying to navigate this by yourself, technology moves fast. Power meters move, meters move fast. Tripping devices, protective relays. These are all great things to start. All great things. That stuff moves fast. If you're not in it every day, you're going to have a better opportunity of being successful if you outsource it to experts or at least bring them in from a consultation standpoint. Again, this is where ECO can step in. So if this is an area you feel like you, you know what, I, I know a little bit about power, but I could use a little bit of help here. This is where we can help you. And then start thinking about those foundational devices, you know, those tripping devices, the meters, the relays, all that stuff. Start thinking about how to, how to start. Again, this is where an expert can help you. And then start thinking about how you're going to navigate it. That's what it's all about. How are you going to navigate this? How am I going to prove this out? To my boss, to my boss's boss, to my boss's boss's boss, right? Now we're going to prove this stuff out to show them, hey, this is where we need to put, to start thinking. This is the impact when we start thinking about our power monitoring and, how, and seamless it can be, the impact it can then have, okay? So now, as you start, as we're, we're, we're getting right here to the end, I want you to think about something. As this technology is involved, right, it's been transformative. It really has been. When you look at the power world and power monitoring and how it's been, it's just, it's, it's transformed over the years. It's incredible. Eaton Solution, Rockwell Solution, they're both great. We even, we've even had power shows in the past at Eco where we've, sh we've shown this, but you need to take it, take your time to understand what's important to you. You need to make sure that you are empowering your facility with the right tools because you need a safer working environment. But you also need to think about what we talked about today, right? Efficiency, how to be more resilient, how to be more technology, technological advanced. All these things matter. So you better be taking, taking your time to navigate the future and don't navigate the future alone. Again, even if it's not eco, if you're not using eco, use an expert out there, partner with an expert that's going to help you because I mean, we have listeners out here that are not in eco service area. That's fine. Partner with someone who can help you. And if you need help, we have lots of resources. We have lots of people with, with, with insight and wisdom and discernment to be able to help you make better decisions. And that's what it's all about. Because power monitoring and industrial manufacturing, it can't be overstated. It cannot be. That's why we're taking this whole podcast and this whole, we put so much effort into this because you know, look where it's all started. The chart recorders and things like that to uh, the way that things have, have, have transformed now to where you're looking at current and technology and get all this, this current signal analysis. Man, it's, inc it's incredible. And it's also imperative. No matter your size, no matter your size, maybe you just have one lineup of switch gear. You know, like Chris, well, what is that going to do for me? It's going to give you a ton for that one lineup of switch gear, put a power monitor on it and let, let us show you how to pull, pull the data out that's going to make you better. Because when you start playing with power, uh, power expert meter and, and power monitor from Eaton and Rockwell and you start coupling your IT and OT together, and you start really getting your teams involved and you start bringing all this power data together to show your the, lead, the, the leadership team how to make better decisions, all of a sudden, things start elevating. Things start growing. And you are going to be putting yourself in a position to be extremely successful. And that's what we want. At ECO, why do you think we do ECO Ask Why? Why do you think we, 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 we have the experts on staff and partner with the best manufacturers? Because we want you to be successful. We want to be your partner. We want to empower you to make better decisions, to have the best equipment available, to have the teams ready to understand the data that comes in, how you can look at this data and say, okay, this data, this trend is telling me this. I need to act at this point in time so that this doesn't cost me. So I don't get that two o'clock in the morning phone call that nobody wants to get. So that your production numbers can, you'll meet what the requirement is, and potentially exceed them. Safer, more efficient, more advanced. That's what it's all about. So let us know what you think of the new Eco Ask Why. It's just been it's been fun for me just to sit back. We're really digging deep. We're trying each and every month. Now we also have a mailing list. So every month. We send out insights, we send out tips, we send out all sorts of, of good information around these technologies. So if you're, if you're not on that, reach out to us. We want to connect with you 
for an electrical equipment company, be able to serve you better, to be able to give you insight, be able to give you the resources that you need to make better decisions. Also, share the podcast out with other people. This is what we just we do this simply because we want to serve our customers better and the people that we try to serve. So share this out with someone else. Maybe you know someone in maintenance or liability or engineering, and you thought this was a good uh, some good information here. Share it out with them. This may be encouraging to them as well. Maybe it's somebody they're ready to start a power monitor and they haven't even considered this technology. You know what? This could be a great way. So share it out with them. Give us a rating and review if you get a chance. That'd be great. Just a five star rating, or one or two sentence review. That those are always great. We would love to hear from you. So we'll have a contact us. We'll, we'll have a, a way for you to contact us inside the show notes. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to get your insight, uh, things you need help with. Again, our team at ECO is ready, willing, able, on the standby at all times. I know our power team in, in all the states, all, all the service areas, the teams that we have, they're just absolutely incredible. I can't say enough. I mean, ECO has been around almost 100 years now. It's, it's, it's incredible. We're coming up on, on a century. The leadership team, the way we put people out there, we really is people and ideas over products is still what we live. We have new systems. We have an e-commerce system now that is just absolutely phenomenal. The whole online shopping experience. So check us out. Go check us. EECOonline.com is where, how you can connect with us there. We have lots of ways we can serve you. If you want to look at our digital storefront where we can get we can come in with punch out catalogs and really integrate with your 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 vmis and things like that we're here we're ready and we have the teams ready to to rock and roll so hopefully you enjoyed this one again it's an honor to be able to do this thank you so much for listening and you know what's coming next right (laughs) keep asking why thank you for listening to eco ask why this show is supported ad free by electrical equipment company ECO is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com.